Hey, what's up guys? My name is Eterno and welcome to a video discussing the future of Sparky. So, as you can see, I'm dressed pretty formally because this is a very serious video, so we got serious Cherno over here. And uh, basically this video, and I'm, I'm here in the flesh as well, doing a vlog kind of thing, because this is legit. So basically, this video is going to be discussing the future of the Sparky engine. Um, as you might, as you may have noticed, I haven't really put out put out a video on a stream for Sparky in a while, and that's just because I've been taking a break from it. Don't worry, nothing's getting cancelled. You guys always get really, really dramatic when I stop making videos. That's it's going to continue. Obviously, I wouldn't just abandon such a beautiful project. Um, I just wanted to switch up to game programming because people were begging me to do game programming, and of course, once I started game programming, people were begging me to bring back Sparky. Anyway, the point is that's not what this video is going to be about. This video is going to be about bringing. Um, well, actually, everything that we're going to do with Sparky in the future, or most things, of course. So, um, in the immediate future, the first thing I want to do, so Sparky Season 1 is kind of over, right? That was where we basically did everything necessary to get the engine off its feet, 2D engine, off its feet to the point where we could even um, basically build it for the web using mscripten, right? So that it could run inside WebGL. So right now it supports Windows and uh, when WebGL, basically, as two platforms. Um, now, I'm actually, for season two, which will start probably within the next two weeks, um, or definitely within the next two weeks, I should say, uh, I'm actually probably going to change up the format of Sparky. So right now, the way that it works is I stream live everything that I do, and I end, I end up uploading two-hour videos, which is, well, one to two-hour videos, which is essentially one episode of Sparky. And the reason they're so long is primarily because, of course, I don't really know what I'm doing, right? The, making a game engine isn't all... I'm not... See, I'm not making a tutorial on how to make a game engine. I'm actually making a game engine. So, of course, there's a bunch of stuff that I'm not sure about. There's a bunch of mistakes I'm making. It's not like I've written a book or I've written an engine and then I'm like, all right, let's teach people how to do this. I'm actually making this in front of you guys. Because of that, of course, it's going to take a while. There are going to be things I don't know. There are going to be things I need to redo. Um, and there are going to be moments where I just stare at the screen for an hour because I don't know why, why something's not working or I don't know how to do something and I need to work it out, right? These things take time. That's normal. Um, so what's happening, unfortunately, because of that, as a result, as a consequence, is that this stuff is going on YouTube and people are like, people are getting two hour videos to their sub boxes and they're being like, oh, I shouldn't say two hour because most of them are around one hour, let's just say one hour. Um, one hour videos to their sub boxes, most people are like, man, like I'd really like to watch that but I'm like 10 episodes behind and they're all an hour long and I don't have time and as a consequence, basically the series isn't doing extremely well and most of you guys aren't really watching that. Um, and I think it breaks down into two reasons. One, the episodes are long and not really... Like, it requires a lot of time to actually keep up with the series. Uh, and two, it's in C++, and most of you are used to Java, and it's just boggling your mind. So, uh, those are two issues. So, I'm going to try and resolve both of those issues somehow. So, the first thing is the format change. What I want to do is this, okay? And this is probably what I'm going to do. I would love your feedback in the comments below. Um, but regard I, I'm very... I'm leaning towards this, and it's probably going to happen. Um... I'm going to change the way I do this. First of all, I will still be streaming all of the most of the most of the development life. There are times where I'm at work, for example, on my lunch break, and I really want to work on this thing, and of course I can't. Or I have 15 minutes, and I'd love to just write a bit of code, but I can't because, of course, I need to stream it. And because of that, the development of the engine really, really, really suffers. What if I'm at you know, what if I'm not home? What if I'm at my parents' place and I've got my laptop and I'd love to just write some code, but I, you know, I got to stream it. Like it, it becomes very, 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 very bad for the actual engine's development because it just slows it down dramatically. Okay. Um, so the first thing I'm going to do is probably not stream all, the de all of the development. If I'm home and I've got at least half an hour, I'll put up the live stream. There's no reason for me not to do that. It's just, I press a button and there we go, I'm live. Um, and I love doing that, so I will be doing that as much as possible, but it won't be all of the engine. The other thing is, but of course all the code will be on GitHub, if you really want you can look at the diffs and figure out what I've done, and, uh, and but there's more, so wait before you start complaining. Um, all of the live streams that do happen, I'm aware that Twitch deletes them after two weeks, so I do want to put them up, however I do not want to put them up on my main channel, because people will get two hour long videos or streams or whatever, and it's just, it really makes this channel messy and it lowers the quality of the channel, because there are some videos you'll watch will be terrible, some, some of them will be me staring at the screen for half an hour, I don't want that, I have like a standard that I want to meet in terms of quality for this channel, so I don't want to do that. 
I do want to put them up somewhere because Twitch will delete them. So I, I'm basically what I'm going to do is I'm going to make a new channel, some called something on the lines of Cherno Archive or something, and I'm going to basically just click the export to YouTube button on Twitch. It's just going to put the unedited stream at whatever low bit rate it was streamed at to that channel, so that if you really, really want to, you can actually, uh, you can actually watch the entire stream. Okay, so you can do that. Don't worry. So I'm, I'm aware that obviously watching a stream at in Australian Eastern Standard Time, like evenings, usually is a very, very bad for people in Europe and America. Um, so I'm thinking of you as well. I'm going to just put that onto that Cherno Archive channel, and you guys can watch away if you really, really for the, for, for all of you hardcore people, so that you can actually watch the entire stream. Okay, and that's fine. I'm definitely going to do that. Um, but the main channel, what what the main channel will receive is basically devlogs or summary videos. So maybe once a week, depending on how often I'm developing this thing, once a week, once every two weeks, I'll put up a video, probably once a week, uh, just detailing all of the changes I've made in the past week. And maybe even looking at diffs um, and looking at, and by diffs, I mean like the, the, the differences that I've made to files. So you can basically see them highlighted and I'll explain them roughly. I'll show you the new features. I'll talk about what I've done and what I want to do with this and the problems and, you know, like a summary, a devlog basically. Um, so that will be put up on the main channel. They'll be between five to 10 minutes. And from there, you guys will be able to request, um, well, essentially, let's just say I did something like something weird that you guys didn't really understand or like something that you would love a video on. For example, I did something weird with my renderer where I, I don't know, I'm, I don't know, I copied the memory somewhere and then did something crazy. I'm making stuff up. Um, I did something weird and uh, you don't know how that, what that, how you don't, you, you'd love to learn more about that technique. In that case, I'm going to read the comments from those devlogs and once per week or whatever, I'll choose the most upvoted comment on something and I'll make an in-depth video about that. But here's the trick. The in-depth video is going to be basically completely separate from Sparky. So the in-depth video will basically be universal. So I'll just talk about that technique in general. I might use some of the Sparky code, but so that anyone who comes to the channel doesn't have to watch the entire series to just watch that video and learn that one thing. Because I've always wanted to do that, because of course, when we've got series like game programming with over 100 videos, if people really want to do something, they need to watch 100 videos to get. It's terrible. I hate it. So I'm going to do that so that anyone can just pick up the video and watch it, and regardless of where they are in the series. Um, and those will be end of the video. So there we go. That's the main plan with the format changes. I hope you guys like that. Um, I hope I explained it well enough. So the main channel will receive devlogs and occasionally in-depth videos on particular concepts, while the Cherno Archive channel will receive all of the live streams that do happen on Twitch. In fact, everything, not just Sparky, just every archive kind of, I'll just dump video data there, basically. Don't care what it was, just dump it. And I'm, I'm not even going to render it from my computer. I don't have time to do that. I'll just export it from Twitch and that's it. Done. Um, that's why I want to keep it on a separate channel because it will be a bit dirty. Okay, so what's next for actual Sparky? Um, well, this vlog's actually going pretty long right now, but I'll quickly mention a few things that I'm going to do. The first thing is we're going to bring a few new platforms in. First of all, Mac and Linux have to happen. I don't actually have a computer running Linux, so I'm hoping that someone from the community can somewhat um, maybe basically port it to Linux or test it on Linux at least. It should reasonably work on Linux. I'm not. I'm trying not to use a Windows library and... Um, you will have to play around with some of the libraries and headers, obviously, but uh, it should basically work out of the box for Linux. Mac, I've got a Mac, so I'll definitely test it on that, make sure it's running on Mac OS, um, and that should be actually pretty easy. Um, but the next big platform that we're going to support is Android. Okay, I've actually got it running on Android. Uh, where's my phone? I wish I had my phone on me. I should have prepared for this, shouldn't I? That's all the way over there. I'm not going to get it. Uh, I've already got it running on Android. Um, so I'm going to just implement that. See, this is what I mean. Like, I did that at work, for example. And I would have loved to push that code to the repository, but I have to go home and stream myself doing it again. That's just so ridiculous. This engine's not going to get anywhere. It's pretty difficult to make an engine. Uh, it doesn't just take five minutes. So anyway, I've got it running on Android. I'm going to actually put that into the engine properly. <laughs> um, because it's actually on like some weird branch and I've called the engine something else. In fact, it's just because I wanted to keep it separate. Anyway, um, so Android will be next. Uh, iOS, uh, the reason I'm kind of shying away from iOS a little bit is because of two reasons. First of all, 
Um, I don't have, I've used an Android as my primary device and I have since the iPhone 4S. Um, and also, um, iOS is a little bit harder to develop for. It generally has less problems than Android, but I mean, you need to develop a license, you need to set up provisioning, you need a Mac with Xcode. It's, it, Sparky will eventually support iOS, but that's very long down the path. Android is going to come very soon. Android, in fact, is a very easy to set up. In fact, we'll be, and we won't be using like Android Studio or some rubbish. We'll <laughs> not dissing that. It's probably fine for like applications, but not for games. Um, we'll be using Visual Studio with Android and we'll set everything up. I got this, guys. Don't worry. Um, we're going to essentially perfect 2D first. So all of the 2D stuff uh, for Sparky will be perfected first. Uh, there are some things I want to add to 2D. Um, we need sprite sheets, not just the ability to load sprite sheets, but the ability to generate sprites, sprite sheets. So say, for example, you load 100 tiles. They're 32 by 32, right? They're textures. Um, you load in 100 textures, 32 by 32. That would require four flushes right now for the engine, um, which, of course, isn't very efficient. Well, it could be more efficient, is what I'm saying. It's actually, that's fine for draw calls. But anyway, the point is... You've loaded a bunch of tiny sprites, uh, they're all individual Im images, so you haven't bothered to put them in a sprite sheet. The engine should basically create a sprite sheet and just make one or two textures or whatever. Because then, of course, that reduces the ability, the, like, the, that reduces the binding of 100 textures to, like, three or four, or even one. Um, so it definitely needs to be able to do that. Blending, so currently sprites have no blending control. Um, you have to control that in the shaders and whatnot. We also need to basically make, like, a shader factory and default shaders and all that stuff, but anyway. That aside, uh, we need sprites should have a blending thing. And finally, the world of C serialization. So serialization is uh, something that we haven't actually touched yet, but basically we need to be able to serialize data um, in terms of writing it to disk. Uh, we're not going to do networking stuff or anything for a while, I don't think. I don't have any of that planned yet, actually. I haven't even thought of that. But um, uh, we need serialization to be able to save and load files. And we'll probably be making our own format for that as well. Because if we were using something like C-sharp, I would probably use C-sharp's XML serialization because that is really good. But we're going to make our own format and we're going to probably serialize stuff and probably compress the data and all that stuff. So we need to do that as well. Those are the three big features I think remain. I don't know. I've kind of, I've discussed it a little bit um, just with my friends. And I think that's probably about it for a 2D renderer. That's really all we need. Uh, well, 2D renderer plus serialization, and, you know, game engine-wise. Um, apart from that, though, rendering aside, we, you know, we've got some other stuff like physics, so we need box 2D and whatnot. Um, and that's probably about... I don't know. Off the top of my hand, that's probably about it. Um, yeah. Physics and serialization are the two non-renderer features that we probably need. I don't know. I can't think of anything else right now. But anyway, that's the idea. So that's what's coming up next. We're going to move on to 3D once that's done. Um, I expect that to be done by the later part of the... So we'll move on to 3D maybe in the next few months. Um, and the other thing that's going to happen is... Uh, so tools. We're not going to develop tools until we're basically done with 3D. The reason is, well, tools take a really long time to make. Um, and by tools, I mean something like a level editor, like Unity or something. Uh, that will take a while, <laughs> okay? It won't be particularly hard, but it will take a while, um, which is a problem. So I don't really want to do that. I'd rather get the engine, because you don't need tools to make the game. It just makes your life easier, right? So I want to, I'd rather get the game, the, the engine to the point where it's, you know, good and then worry about tools because tools are something that will take a, like a long time. Some tools will be made though, like a build tool, for example. So we need to be able to generate project files for Android M script and all of that stuff. We probably need an M script and plug, uh, like a Sparky M script and plugin for Visual Studio and all of that stuff. So those kind of really like small tools that will probably take a couple of weeks to develop or whatever. I'll do those. That's fine. And of course I'll stream them or whatnot, but, um, big tools like a level editor or, uh, like a particle editor. That kind of stuff. Oh, that's another thing we need. We need uh, an, um, we need, we need like a, a visual effects system or a particle system. Um, so that will happen as well. <laughs> anyway, um, yeah. So we're not going to do stuff like tools. Uh, I'm going to save that uh, for later. 
cool. Anyway, those that's what's going to happen with Sparky. I hope you guys are happy with that. Um, one more thing I do want to mention is if I have time, and this is going to be something that I... It's never easy to make these series, but I'm going to try. I'm going to try and make a... Basically, a beginner's C++ series. Now, I really hope that... Well, two reasons. Well, two things, really. A, I don't get bored. And B... Um... <laughs> B, I can explain it well enough, I hope, because, like, teach, I've, if you haven't noticed, I've kind of avoided teaching Java or C++ because I do actually tutor it privately, that's the channel.com slash tutoring if you're interested, but, um, I don't actually make videos on it because I just, it's not something that, it's, it's something that requires a lot of work, like a lot of pre-production, essentially, um, and I have to get everything right and, like, getting everything right factually is pretty easy, but getting everything right as in I want to mention everything about something when I'm talking about it, but I also want to keep it concise. It requires a lot of pre-production, I don't have time to do that, but I really want to do that for C++ because A, I'm not really happy with the C++ resources out there, but B, a lot of you guys aren't watching Sparky, and I tweeted the fact that I wanted to make a C++ series, and if you guys were interested, it got like 50 favorites really quickly, which is I think the most I've ever had for a tweet, honestly. So. Um, all of you guys really want that, so I'm going to try my best to do that, but just don't expect that anytime soon, basically, towards the end of the year, maybe. Okay, cool. Anyway, that's all I wanted to say, so leave some comments below. I really want to read what you guys, um, are saying about this. I'm going to, um, uh, as always, if you want to know when I'm streaming next, live.thechannel.com has a countdown timer to the minute I go live, assuming I'm not late, and I usually am, but... That aside, um, leave your comments below. I'm going to read all of them, and hopefully we can, um, hopefully we can, we can make Sparky really, really good. All right, guys. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time. Goodbye. Whoa.